So, Morali, we know that two thirds of people impacted by Alzheimer's disease are women. Do we know, do we have any clue as to why? No, we don't. Um, and, and this was not even fully appreciated uh, from a scientific point of view until perhaps about four or five years ago. Um, interestingly, the very first case of Alzheimer's described a hundred years ago was in a woman. Uh, and that was the case uh, where Dr. Alzheimer uh, sort of noticed the plaques and tangles, what are now considered the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. And it's interesting that 100 years later, now we're discovering that there may be sex differences, uh, gender differences, if you will, or sex differences in the vulnerability for Alzheimer's. And it's a huge public health priority for us to try to dig deep and try to see if it's true or not. So are you looking into obviously genes, right? Being, um, making, I mean, the, the genes that, uh, or the chromosomes that women have perhaps make them more vulnerable to the disease? So I think we have to step, uh, take one step back. Uh, for many years it was thought that yes, women are more likely to uh, have Alzheimer's simply because they live longer. So it was what was considered as a bias. So most research studies that found that two-thirds of Alzheimer's subjects were women, they automatically dismissed it saying, oh, it's because women live on average four years, five years longer than women. And we know age is one of the biggest risk factors for Alzheimer's. So they explained it all the way saying there are no sex differences in the true risk for Alzheimer's is only because they live longer. Anybody who lives longer has a greater risk. And that sort of uh, myth, if you will, um, uh, was struck a near body blow about uh, five years ago when studies showed that the age specific rates of Alzheimer's in your 60s, in your 70s, in your 80s, at each of these decades was twice as high in women than it was in men, suggesting that it was not solely due to women living longer, uh, there was something else going on there. And that's when sort of researchers started sort of digging in and we're still in very early days and, and so we still don't fully know all the reasons. So what are you looking, with, within your research, what are you trying to address? So the first thing uh, we are trying to do is to try to replicate these findings uh, using what's called as a longitudinal naturalistic study. Uh, there is a large study that has been done in the U.S. for the last 10 years. It's called the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative. It's a study that has followed about 1,500 individuals with and without Alzheimer's over a 10-year period. It has tracked them both in terms of their cognitive scores, their functioning, but has also collected a range of biomarkers, their blood tests, their genetic tests, brain scans, and when subjects go to autopsy, it has also looked at their brains. And this study, surprisingly, uh, was not geared towards looking at sex differences. It was look, the study's aim was to look at other issues. So we now have this treasure trove of data that I can go in and say, do women truly progress faster than men? What is the magnitude of differences? Which of the different stages of Alzheimer's disease does the sex difference become most obvious? And then at that stage, I can dig deeper into their biomarkers to see what are the possible mechanisms. Is that um, Dr. Michael um, Weiner's study? That's right. Yeah, Dr. okay. Dr. Michael Weiner was yeah. the principal investigator of the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, which has now ended, formally ended. Oh, it did? Yeah. did it just recently, though, <laughs> yeah. is it? Just yeah. recently yeah. ended, and then there is another variant of it called the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative Study 3, which okay. is going to begin. Okay. Sure. So do we know, um, has there been any indications that the disease actually presents itself differently from women to, to men? It probably does um, because we know that on a variety of cognitive tests, um, men and women perform differently. On some types of tests, women perform worse and on other types of tests, men perform worse. So verbal abilities, for example, women tend to do a lot better than men. Uh, and women tend to do a little bit worse than men on some spatial abilities and certain types of math abilities. So it depends on what kind of test you go in. That's one. I think women in general tend to seek treatment earlier than men. I think they're smarter that way. Uh, so there's also a tendency for women to be diagnosed at a slightly earlier stage because they come for treatment early, unless the man is in a high powered job where the job is causing a lot of problems, such as you know, an accountant who's struggling or an economist or a doctor or whatever struggling with their day-to-day -day tasks. The second uh, difference is that 
certain behavioral uh, problems associated with Alzheimer's also tend to vary between men and women. So depression tends to be a little bit more common uh, in women, whereas certain types of verbal aggression, agitation, those kinds of behaviors tend to be a little bit more common uh, in men. The last but not least, uh, you know, women comprise most caregivers. Let's not forget that. 60, 70, 80 percent of caregivers, depending on the setting, are women. So women bear the brunt of the disease, no matter who it affects, whether it affects a woman or it affects a man, the caregiver almost always tends to be a woman. In the grand scheme of things, as um, researchers look for a cure to this disease, why does it really matter? Um, why do if we know it's affecting, impacting both sexes, maybe one more than the other. Why does it really matter that we know the reason behind women are, more women are getting the disease? Well, there are two things. Until about uh, 25, 30 years ago, most clinical trials were done in men. They were not done in women. So for example, the famous study called the aspirin study, which is the basis for most people taking a low-dose aspirin to prevent heart attack, was done exclusively in men. And we don't know if aspirin at that same dose would work in women or not. So in the NIH in 1993 passed an act called the Revitalization Act mandating that women be included in clinical trials and that all clinical trials have a separate hypothesis to test whether men and women have different pathways to disease and whether drugs benefit people differently. We've learned there are tremendous variations between men and women. We've learned that tremendous variations from individual to individual, so let's put that aside. So for example, women are much more vulnerable to side effects of drugs at the same dose. So the one size fits all pill that is developed by a big company, you know, 20 milligrams of uh, Prozac or 50 milligrams of Zoloft, it affects men and women differently. Their blood levels are different. Their propensity for side effects are different. The second thing we know that the biology of disease is very different. So let's just take the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. Most people don't realize the X chromosome is massive compared to the Y chromosome. The X chromosome has thousands of genes. The Y chromosome has a puny, I don't know, maybe less than 100 genes. There are many diseases whose genes are housed on the X chromosome, making women more vulnerable to those genes. So, so I think it's very important for us to study this. And, and then there's this whole issue of hormonal differences, which are obvious, right? We're imprinted with hormones, our brains testosterone, estrogen, so clearly they play very important roles. So undoubtedly there are different pathways to disease in men versus women. For example, amongst non-smokers, women are much more likely to get lung cancer than men. So you can't say they're similar. Mm -hmm. And I think it's crucial because if we truly find out that say men have a lower risk for a certain disease or women have a lower risk for a certain disease and we can identify that pathway, then we can target or develop drugs based on those mechanisms to help everybody. Great, that's great. So tell me um, about what specifically your, re your latest research is, is doing. So the Cure Alzheimer's Fund um, has funded me now to specifically look at two things. Do women at risk for Alzheimer's truly progress faster than men? And the second is, if they do progress faster than men, can we identify underlying cellular and genetic mechanisms that may explain that? And so those are the two big things we're working on. We're about you know, a quarter of the way through the project. We have some early results to show today, and then we'll have some more results in February of this year. And then by February, what do you hope to know? By February, I hope to see if there are different networks and pathways of chemicals and genes and proteins that are involved in women versus men in terms of the transition from normal aging to preclinical Alzheimer's. That's the transition point we are looking at. Great, great, thank you very much. Thank you.